you write like one, two, three, four on the back of the painting. So I roll like a four sided die to see each time, like which way you turn it and where it ends is like kind of where the painting, like if it's vertical or horizontal. Um, but oh, yeah, I mean, yeah. so like, so you would flip heads or tails for like up and like down or like to the side. Um, just kind of like trying to figure out everything that I could, anything that someone that normally paints would make a decision on. Hi, everyone. Thanks for listening to another episode of The Creative Truth. Today, I'm joined by a very special guest, another uh, tenant slash neighbor of mine at the stables in Savannah, Sir Bradley Collins. Hey. <laughs> Thanks for hey. coming on. <laughs> yeah. Um, so the first question I like to ask people, uh, and then again, it gets super informal from here, is how has where you're from shaped the artist you are today? Man, um, I don't know. So growing up, I had, I wasn't really, I guess I was like creative, but in like an unknowing, like I just like sat in my room and I remember like, like cutting up pictures of stuff and making collage art and Like I would make like weird stop motion videos and stuff on my laptop kind of like, but I just kind of, it was like something that I did instead of thinking of like, like I never thought about like going to art school or doing like, or that it was anything. I just was like, I liked, I was really into music and I think some of the bands that I listened to, like some of the guys in there were artists, but I never really thought of them more than like, it's like the drummer does this. And I was like, those guys are really cool. So like I would like get into stuff like that. Or like, I, I just kind of like mostly just starting like being into music, but like being, f- I'm from Greenville, South Carolina. And I don't know if like, I mean, obviously it shapes you to be where you are and like growing up, but I didn't have like any, any idea that I would do, I would be here, like, especially painting. I um, was really into music and um, it's weird. It's weird to like think back. Cause I feel like I, I like put myself into like a, like whole growing up. Like I, I probably wasn't as like uncool as, I like Thought of made myself out or like that. I like, I'm like, I just like chilled in my room and, um, did like play guitar and stuff and was kind of like a sad boy. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> like, um, how'd you make the stop motions? Just, I like got an iMac when I was, it was like 2011 and it had like the photo, um oh with like with the webcam oh yeah you know, like on the computer it has oh, yeah, like the yeah. little webcam and um i would just like take pictures and then put them all together like in iMovie or something um i don't think i had ever had a computer i guess i had a computer before that but it was like getting that and i was like playing in this band and we were all kind of like doing weird stuff i think i was like 13 and all the guys were like in high school i was just oh wow um almost famous it was weird yeah i mean it was like we were terrible yeah but um it was fun like i played bass and but we would always like we were they were always making stuff and then um we would just mess around with like cameras and stuff and so i think just getting like that mac and having the idea that it was like you can create with this Instead of like a normal computer, which you totally could have, like, you can do probably more. I don't know. Do you still keep up with any of those guys from the band? Um, one, so I was pretty much in the band because my best friend growing up was like the main 
dude. Hmm. And so I see him like whenever I go back home and he's like a big sound engineer at home now. Um, the rest of the guys, like, I think they didn't really like me the whole time. I was like, I am never good at playing any instruments, but I, which I think like, it's one of the things that like has gone into my work is like, like I can remember. So like they would just, I couldn't write like a bass riff or something. Like I had no, I wasn't helpful at all in the process, but, um, but I could like pick up what they wrote and play it. Mm -hmm. So I was like the, the standby, like stand in bass player, but actually in the band like the whole time. And so, which was fine. Like it was, it was cool. I had fun. And we like, we didn't like, we played around like South Carolina and stuff. That's cool. But, um, yeah, I was just like, but I could pick up whatever, like my buddy would write for me and play it. But I was not, it was not my playing music was definitely not my thing. Um, yeah, I don't know. Like, I'm not very straightforward with answers either. So oh, no, like, and I will definitely go off into <laughs> many things. I don't think I'll ever answer. Like, I don't know how, I mean, I think, where you come from shapes you because it's like the beginning of you thinking what you want to go do. And like, I just wanted to get out. I hated school and, um, it was just weird to me. Like the whole thing, like, and I think I, like I was a part of like, like I went to parties and stuff and like, but I was always, kind of skeptical of like my brother went to college and I think he was taking like he took like a scuba or like a like a snorkeling class or something and I just was like this makes no sense I don't I don't know why I would go to school to do that it just seems like a waste of time um but yeah I think like all those thoughts of like growing up and being where you are and you kind of have like the angst and like you're trying to get out which i like later on you i learned like as i did get out it's like everyone that everyone wants to get out of where or like everyone i met like wants to go no somewhere else yeah and um greenville's weird because like most people end up coming back and it's like it just kind of restarts like almost every everyone i know is like back there again and they're like working for someone's dad's like reality company or like and my parents are like who grew up there they're like yeah like that's kind of what they did like when we were growing up it's just like my mom's still there um you think you'll end up back up there i don't i hope not i mean i not that i like greenville's weird for me um, it's like I get anxiety when I go there. Yeah. Um, yeah, like I love to see. And there was a little time where when I didn't, and but now, like after I left and then going back, I really was like, this place is tight. Like this is cool. It's kind of growing up because I, I remember when it was like farmland, and like now it's just crazy. And um, but I think just like it's like it changed. And it's gotten nicer and like now like I talk to people, people know about Greenville now, which is really weird. So like you talk to people and they're like, oh, I've been there. It's really nice. And like it is really nice. Um, but it's just like I think I have a, like I've always had like a bad like I'm, I dwell on like everything, which I've gotten better at. But like I think for a long time it was like anything bad. Like I, I'm almost I was like a like a like they tell i have buddies that were like addicts and stuff and like they they're like well they tell you not to go back to this place because it'll like trigger like a memory of like something and i feel like that it's like driving around there it's like i i'm like fuck i did something stupid there or like and it just it's just too much like i, I want to move forward and um 
especially now, like, um, in the past two years, I've like really like made the steps to kind of like work on like my mental state and my like life and how I feel about and think about things and kind of be more open. Um, and it just, I think I just don't mesh with Greenville anymore. And like the, I don't know, like I have story, like the one time we went back to vote and like, I, we saw like within 15 minutes saw like a cop, like high five, a guy that was like yelling at a lady on the side of the street and they had Trump flag. It was like a Trump parade like on election day. And so we went and voted and we're like, let's go to, we went to Charlotte or we went to Asheville and like, then went to Charlotte to see like my, my uncles and just kind of had to get out of there like immediately. And it's just weird. Um, But I've had the feelings where it's changed in time, like, you know, so I don't know, at some point, you know, if you go back and be like, this place is tight. Um, Could happen. Wait, so I want to talk about um, how you ended up, like, focusing on painting. Because, I mean, you did music and animation. And, like, do you remember the first time you painted something? And you have a really particular Yeah, I mean, I remember the first time I painted something, I was in, like, I was in a Christian middle school. And I, I painted, like, a guitar. And... I had this art class and the teacher was great. And but that was like the first time I ever painted anything. And well, the first time I ever painted anything actually is my dad went out of town and um, my mom, we came home and my mom had uh, bought all these paints and she was like, we're going to paint the upstairs. And we did like, it was like a Jackson Pollock, like just throw paint everywhere. Like the whole, this whole like this big size of a room just really? like us oh, going crazy yeah my mom was always very like i don't mean like that wouldn't even been like a supportive it was like a just like be open and like do your thing and we'll figure it out like when your dad gets home and um I, she like my I, we were pretty young but like i remember like she's told like my dad got, got back into town and he was always traveling and like he get back in town and she was like you won't like believe what the boys did they got into some paint and I just best be like, you know, I'm going to show you. And we, like, she took us upstairs and, or took him upstairs and he's like, what the fuck? And she's laughing. Yeah. 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 She's she's like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it was like, it was just like, I'm just kidding. Like, look, we like painted the house. <laughs> like, just, so just stuff like that was, that was probably the first time I ever like painted, but yeah. So your mom's like pretty creative. Like she's, she's just supportive of it everything i mean she's like like i had back surgery and she would do like i think in the six months where i was like laid up she got like three degrees like two year degrees like just would stay up and like sit there on the computer and like go through them she's like a master diver or like whatever the highest of like dive diving is and like she's a physical therapist and a nutritionist and would run triathlons and marathons and bike like do like the 100 mile bike every day for like a week thing and like she was just always all all over the place she still goes and dives and stuff like every other month Is is your dad creative at all um my dad is like a math whiz you could like tell him like like a crazy like math problem he'll tell you the answer and it'll be right like it, he's i mean he's a businessman he's a s- salesman yeah um and i think that's like i mean but just getting a sense of your parents that kind of makes sense for what you do yeah yeah so like it, it's funny because like like the normal question would be like so do you how did you get into painting or music like like my dad i don't think my dad listens to music <laughs> like I, he drives I mean, he, he might in silence for he drives in silence i mean for the most part um i'm pretty sure he doesn't listen to music and has not like i think he like he likes he'll put on like imagine dragons radio when we like come over to his house for like family dinner or something but um (laughs) yeah i don't think it's just not on his like it's not his thing yeah and then 
but yeah, I think like, I think the idea of like being able to do something and like going for it would be like from both of them. Mm -hmm. And then, but like the, like what I do has, it's like people post every time I post someone's like, you should be my math teacher or like you like, man, this is crazy. And it's all like, it's all literally like made up. I mean, it's like me making equations that make sense to me. It has no basis in math other than being numbers and having like, it's like placeholders for an idea. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think everyone's like, I think they're like creative in their endeavors, hmm. but they definitely don't like, they don't paint. They're not like artists or. Right, right, yeah. This episode of The Creative Truth is sponsored by Colas Modern, a family owned art and design studio focused on producing contemporary furniture and home decor based right here in Savannah, Georgia. The company is owned by David and Lara Colas. David is a former podcast guest. So if you haven't listened to that one, go check it out. All of their furniture and home goods are designed and manufactured right here in Savannah, Georgia, handmade, uh, including this coffee table, which is like an absolute favorite of mine. So if you're looking for a personal gift with a story behind it, you can check out some of their unique cutting boards, so like their butler board, their cleaver board, or their fruit board, and more. You can follow them on Instagram at shopmodernheritage or find them online at shopmodernheritage.com. That's on Instagram. Instagram at Shop Modern Heritage or online at shopmodernheritage.com. Walk me through the process. Like, I don't fully under. I know that there's dice involved and random is part of it. But then once you find your sequence, like, talk me through that. Like, how do you, you have a blank canvas. How do you start? So I start, it's all starts by like writing out. So it just, it starts with like, yes or no. And like with a coin. So I have like a, and my girlfriend got me like a, a special flipping coin um, that I like keep in my pocket at all times. And because yeah. I'm like, as I got into this, I like thinking back, I've been terrible at making decisions my whole life. Hmm. Like, I remember going, like, my mom's like, it's your birthday. Like, we, we, we would go to, like, we went to Toys R Us. Like, I remember this vividly, like, being in Toys R Us and wanting to, like, get Legos or something for my birthday. And she's like, pick one. And I'm like, you pick. Like, I, ha I couldn't, I had no idea. And I, it was, like, with everything my whole life. I just couldn't make a decision. And I don't, like, and I think that's one of the biggest things about, doing this is like so I started and it was just like drawing lines and um because I had no idea what to do I was just like so stuck for like two years I was a, I was printmaking and um and you just kind of like I just got to this place where I'm like I'm in school for this but I don't know what I'm doing and so I just went to like the easiest, I was like, I'm going to try and draw like a straight line. So it kind of started there. And that was like the first rule was like, you just have to fill the whole paper with straight lines, however long it takes. So it would take like four hours and you kind of like get into your head. And I started thinking about all this stuff and it's like, you'd have good days or you have bad days and you're like, so like I'd have a bad day and I'd just like, it would be like thinking about everything terrible that I've ever done. Or like think like zoning in on like one person being like, man, I fucked like this whole relationship up or like these things happen or like, like, and not even like friendships or anything. It's like, man, like I think just, ha and I would do it in silence. Like it was very like, it was kind of like detrimental to your, like your mind to like mm -hmm. jump into something like that. And, and, um, but it, it, it like brought me to where I am now without like knowing. I mean, it like really broke me down. To it, wasn't my... the, it wasn't the intention, but it was. The no. Yeah. Like point. broke me down. Like I go to therapy and stuff now. Not like for that, but like like on my I was like it brought me to like this place where you're like there are things like you start thinking about stuff. And I was like, I want to like better myself. Mm. 
but so like the the and that's i don't know it's like well way further off of them. Oh, that's not good. even close to but so back to like it's pretty much just deciding to do something and doing it and it all be kind of it all became like a job like and that's kind of how i think about it it's like so i i've like come up with this main idea of like what i like i have no idea what they're gonna look like and um i wondered that too yeah yeah i mean like yeah i mean i could say that like i i could probably like guess but not really i mean it's weird i think by the end of the old paintings like the first set of paintings um i kind of like got a grasp and then i was like okay let's like do something else and now like the new ones it's just so up in the air because it's just such a larger scale and like such a smaller scale of brush um so it just comes out it's like crazy every time so but, what do you what when you what, what happens when you flip yes on your coin so like yeah so so to start anything like it's yes or no but i, I only use like cmyk like a printer i mean like i went to school for printmaking um originally well originally I went to school for um production design and then couldn't get into classes and started printmaking and uh that was like the first time i ever like made something um and got really into it and then everyone's like a f photo major or a illustrator and they're like this isn't really like you're i was just doing like tests i was just like interested in time and how things like putting at like a piece of, piece of copper and acid for two days and then seeing what it looked like when you printed it and so I was like, they're like, you should paint because like the painting department at SCAD is like, you can do whatever you want really. And, um, so the, like the yes and no just became, came out of like having no idea what to do and just like breaking into like trying to give everything up. And, um, like the CMYK was because of the printing and, um, so everything starts with like writing, you start with yellow, yes or no, do I use it? And then from there you go through and it changes like every time. But, um, like if I think of a new rule or is there's something new, I'll like put a little like star. Um, so that's like the pieces of paper that I'll post on Instagram. It's like this crazy writing. Um, all of those are, it starts with heads or tails. Like, should I do this? And then um, from there, I have all these like different numbered dice that go up to like a hundred. And so you, it's like getting this fake algorithm of how to count out um, like a sequence. And I don't know, it's, it's really hard to explain. Like, I mean, like I get it and I could probably explain it r way better um so it's like it's a grid based painting yeah with no lines or or tape or anything so it's all by hand and yep. um so it's, it's really just starting from so like you work left to right and then top to bottom well yeah like i number the painting so everything start. it's like you you figure out i'll do like a bracket system kind of to figure or like a tournament system to figure out what brushes i use so everything just goes into like, it's like, this is what I have. Everything's random. And let's figure out what I'm going to use. So that's all the setup. And it's like, you write like one, two, three, four on the back of the painting. So I roll like a four sided die to see each time, like which way you turn it and where it ends is like kind of where the painting, like if it's vertical or horizontal. Um, but oh, yeah, okay. I mean, so like, so you would flip heads or tails for like up and like down or like to the side. Um, just kind of like trying to figure out everything that I could, anything that someone that normally paints would make a decision on, like when it's done or like, so if you, you don't, that's a chance. Is it done? Yes or no? Um, well now it's, now it's kind of into like it it ends when you you finish with black and so you roll at the beginning of black to see how many runs you'll go through mm -hmm. 
So like one through four. So the end of, if it's four, the end of four, it's done. And like, I mean, half of them, you know, as it like it, the whole thing has been about like giving it all up. And like, you're like, people are like, do you like it? Like, it doesn't really matter. And like, and I like, and I definitely like, I'll look at a couple and I'm, I'm like, I fucking hate it. Like it, it looks shitty, but it's not really like about that. And that was the whole thing is like, it's not about what it's more about like the writing and the process. And, um, and it's awesome to make one that looks cool. And you're like, this is awesome. Like it came out and, um, but like when I finish one, I just kind of like, it's time to like start the next one. You know, it's not like, it's more of just like a job. So I'm just like seeing through. So like I've had, I have like artist statements and stuff about being like the boss and the laborer. So you're like, the boss is like writing out this, these instructions. And then like the job part would be like the laborer of Bring just it, coming in and looking at what was decided that you're going to do and then just fulfilling the order. That's why you call it a work order. So that, yeah, that was like the work order and that was the beginning. Um, Fascinating, dude. Yeah. I've, yeah. I mean, it's, I don't know. It's hard to like explain. It works very well in my mind and I like, I get it and like in it, it works like, like I get pissed off if I don't like, like we'll go out of town and they just like, are you good? I'm like, I just need to get back in the studio. Like I need for some, like sitting there and doing the same thing over and over has like, it's really good for my mind. And you mentioned that. Yeah. yeah. You like, like monotonous tasks, right? Yeah. Like all my jobs have always been like, like I unloaded 18 wheelers. Like I, I'm working with tugboat and it's like the best thing. It's like a dream come true. Like <laughs> just like pull a shirt off and shout press out, it. And then shout out to custom hustle. Yeah. Custom hustle. <laughs> But like you're, it's just like repetitive, repetitive jobs are like the best thing ever because you're, and that's what, like, I feel like with the paintings, it's, it's like, you can have the worst job ever. And I think like, there's something about going in and like, like I unloaded 18 wheelers and it's in the middle of summer in Savannah and it, it sucked. I didn't get paid mm -hmm. like anything. And, um, and you're, it's just like the same thing over and over. And you're just like about to die because it's so hot. Like it was crazy. Uh, I would come home and my face, like have like red ring. Like I was so dehydrated and like, but you wake up and you're like, okay, I'm going to go do it again at like five in the morning because you finish, you like finish a truck and you're like, I don't. I don't want to do this ever again. And then when you finish it, you have like that moment of like, I did it. And that's kind of the like spark of like doing something that's really repetitive and shitty and takes a really long time that when you get to finish it, finally, it's like, like, whew, like I, I made it through. And, um, for some reason like that, makes it all worthwhile at least for a second and then it's like that feeling kind of fades so you have to do it again um it's just kind of getting that like one like spark and because you need like something in yourself like no one no one's telling you you did a good job when you finish a truck in the middle like at the end of the day because these people have been doing it forever and no one gives a fuck like you're doing a job that they, they literally are like okay, like, come back tomorrow. So you kind of have to grasp on to like something in yourself of like, I think you just get beat down if you're like, no one cares. Cause no one cares. And like, if it, you know, it's like, it's a job. It's like, good. Oh, you did, went and did your job today. Like good for you. And so like to grab like any, any goal and like be like, okay, like I just got to get like to this point. And then from there, like, like there's lines on the floor of these trucks and you're like, Oh my God, I got in here. That means there's 10 feet left. And it's just like grabbing onto those little goals and being like, like I did that. It's like, I can do more. And I think it's like the same thing with the paintings is like picking, like, I want to get to the middle. 
and you get to the middle and you're like, okay, I can keep going. It's like running, you know? Yeah, you're, you're like, like, okay, you're like I'm going to die. I did a mile. Like, yeah. Maybe I can do. You're like, I I'm going to do five. And you're like halfway and you're like, I'm going to die. And you get a five and then you're like, I could probably go a little more. Yeah. Or, I mean, maybe not, but like, and I'm not like a big runner or anything, but I like biking. Um, but I do, I, I think my mind just likes like pushing myself. Like. Those little incremental. Goals. Yeah. They're like when I did, I would go to the gym and like run on a treadmill and it's like. I'm going to get to five miles and I'm going to do it. But then it's like the times that it's like, it took however many minutes, but it's like 1245. And I don't know if that's, I don't know, but you're like, Oh, okay. Well I'll run for like until it's 13. But then like the bar is like, well now you're at 8.5 miles. And it's like, okay, well I'll get to nine. And then by that, I don't, like my mind has to like oh. line everything up and it needs to like get to, so it's like setting these goals and like. I'll run like, to the end of this song. Or yeah. I'll, I'll run a hundred steps. Yeah. It's like, okay, the song, like, yeah. So for, it's like at 0.5, let's like bump it up and just rip through till the end and see if I can do it. Yep. Um, That's funny. My brain kind of works like that too. I kind of have to, do, to play tricks on myself. Yeah. Oh yeah. Me. And I think, I mean, it really works. It's like weird. Cause you're just like, you're like, I'm going to like, I'm not going to be able to do it, but then you're like, let's just like do it. And then you'll be done. And so how, what's the average amount of time and like the longest you've spent on like one painting? Uh, probably like a month, but that's like, once I start, I just kind of like have to, like I'll use, I'll come in for like an hour. Like if I have like an hour, um, because I really, I really don't like leaving without finishing, like, like getting to a point where I feel like I got to a, like if I say I want to get to the middle by this point and it's taking way too long, I'll just stay until I do it. Or like if I leave, it's, I won't sleep. Like I'll think about it. I got to go back. But yeah, it's, it's weird. I don't know. It's just like one of those things. Like, I think you, you build in your mind of like, I think it's like coping and figuring out how to like deal with things and setting goals for me was like the, I think I, I also, I didn't, I don't think I got like, Never, I'm like the second child. I don't think I ever got really like in trouble or reprimanded. And like, so I would build these. I was like, I'm like, oh, I fucked up. So I would, I would like put it on myself. I'm like, okay, you got to do this now, which is like detriment. It's like not the way to handle stuff like that at all. But um, just weird things like that is, are things that while like working on these things, I realized that I was doing to myself or like that you just like think about um when you're painting in silence which i don't do anymore because it's too much <laughs> but so you'll go and you'll put on some tunes and then so you're you're in, you're not like really present you're you're in your head the whole time yeah um yeah i mean it's like because you don't have to like i mean you're just counting and yeah and I've gotten pretty good at that. <laughs> I mean, you know, and so it's, you don't have to really focus as much on, like, you don't have to be present because you're just following like a line. And, and because I don't do it like with tape or anything, I'm not like, you gonna know it's going to be weird. The algorithm, like if I put it into a computer, it would come out and be like a perfect, like everything would be spot on and it would be, it would make, a lot of more sense but because you're like i count by hand and i like do it's like 12 marks i mean they're all different sizes and then you count 11 that aren't actually there and so you're just kind of like guessing the size of the other ones each there's like a variable there that changes how it works and like if i every time i sit down like you'll see in the paintings, it'll be like very linear. Like it'll be like pretty spot on for like, like a fourth. And then you'll see where it, it like, there'll be a big 
curve or something it's usually when i like i went to the bathroom and came back or like because you just start like you you break it and then you start counting differently or like you or like you the spaces you're not like in time anymore so you like the spaces move or they get bigger so you like that there's like a little imperfection to it yeah i mean it never made sense to like make it perfect and like tape it out or um like like gridding one of those in the like way i did i tried to grid one and i just like i did it and then i'd never used the grid i just still like painted how because it just didn't make sense to like it almost just like messed me up more or like made me mad when you're like, you're like, well, by the third one, I'm like the lines, not like the brush isn't in the box. It's like halfway in the box or something. So it was just kind of like has one of those like effect where you're like, okay, this is, doesn't make any sense. Like, like I want it, if you're going to do that, it should be perfect. And I don't think I would ever finish one. It would just take so long. And like, it wouldn't it, it's like goes back to the whole work thing like you're everything has like i write all this stuff out and like you anyone could recreate these if they like had the means or like the like if i told you like this is what this meant and this is what this meant um but you could do it and they would be kind of similar but they would be different mm -hmm. um and I think it's the same thing as like having a job, like you, you go and you work with someone and they do like, everyone does everything differently. And, but like a little bit like, Oh, well, this is how we do it here. It's like, well, that's not how we do it here, but okay. Um, and I think just like going, I like the idea that someone could pick it up and try and figure out how, what's going on and like could recreate it. And, um, but it would be it would be a little different and if it was like everything was gridded out and you're like this box and this box and this box are going to be blue and this one yellow you could make it exactly the same every time and it's not really like what i'm going for um i just think i think just like going in and doing it as in my own way is like it's like the selfishness of painting but in my way is like the reason I'm not like, I'm not like, no one, no one's going to like, like, this isn't perfect yet. You know, like I need to add something for like, so the show, when I show it, like people are like, this is perfect. It's like, this is done. So it's perfect. It is what it is. And, um, you get to, you get to show it. And I have all the writings of how you got to this point, And I think that's like a bigger part of it. Um, but, uh, I don't think like it wouldn't do anything for me. And that's like the selfish part. Like it's awesome to sell a painting, but it's also really nice to like, like, I don't know if there are people out, I'm sure there's people out there that don't like painting that are great at painting and they're selling a lot of work and doing their thing. But I just don't think I would do it. I would just like find so you, something else. If so you're I, definitely doing it for yourself then. Oh yeah. Like, I mean, you know, everyone wants like the pat on the back. It's great to like, like someone's like, this one's awesome. You're like, thanks. Like, yeah, it was cool. Cause I enjoy doing it, you know? And so it is cool when someone like sees or like has a question about like the writings or like, like that's cool. Cause it, it like opens up this, like it opens up like questions to this thing that I thought was like mine. No one ever understood or cared. Like, you know, it just was like, this is what I do. It's weird. And then people are like, this one's awesome. Or like, I want to know more about like the writing, like the work order bags and stuff and shirts. It's like, they actually, people wanted them, which was crazy. Like, like that's, it's great. You know, it's cool. It's, it makes you feel good and it makes it like, it gives you like that little push. But like, um, I think like without just having the studio and being able to go in there and like get away like if I had to do it for some reason, I don't think it would, I would just like go do something else that I don't know. I think and I, like it could happen at any time. Like if any, I just think like 
if you don't have the if the drive becomes like like I say it's a job but I enjoy jobs like that you know right. it's like right. like if I didn't I wouldn't do it I'd probably just paint like a normal I don't know I don't know what I'd paint I probably wouldn't paint but um yeah I think once it like becomes the job you don't want to do or like you're like well I have to go in and you'll do it for a while like I've had so many like I just quit my job to come and make t-shirts and like I did it for a while and it was okay but I hated it and I like the guys I worked with but at some point it was like I don't even care like that I like you guys like I'm miserable and so then it just like shows on that and then it like messes up relationships because you're like they're like they're like come on like we're buddies but you're like not doing anything you know mm -hmm. it's like like i just have to get the fuck out of here and and i think that comes with just like literally taking a job that you like you're like i need a job yeah. and then you just go and do whatever someone tells you like they're like here i know a guy that needs people to help and it's fine for a little bit but it's hard to continue that way. And I think a lot of people do. I think people like really burn themselves out. Like just like, it's like, this is what I'm supposed to do. I'm supposed to have this job. I'm supposed to make this much. And like, I don't know. It's, there's something to be said. Like that's a whole nother thing of like the people that can do that and make it through and like enjoy life for what it is and where they're at is like so cool. Yeah, just being uh, content. Yeah, like, and I wish I, like, I wish I could be content, you know? It's yeah. like, and that's, what, like, one of the things you kind of, like, I work on, you know, is, like, like, I wish that, like, sometimes I wish that I was, like, people that I grew up with where they're, it's, this is what I do, and it's all very, like, they're just fine being where they are, and it's all good. And you don't have to, you don't like, you're not worrying about like, like the things in my head are not like probably anywhere near. And I mean, how, how would I know? But like, this is how I like it's something, I guess you tell yourself, but I'm like, I want to be like that guy. He seems like he's just chilling and like, everything's great. He's not worrying about stuff. I'm sure they are, but. Do you uh, believe in the tortured artist? Like you have to be tortured to create good work. No, I don't think so. I mean, like the, like, like getting, you have to like get fucked up and like go through the whole. Yeah. Like it's coming from something that's maybe not necessarily positive in somebody's like personality or. I don't think so. I think like, I mean, I think a lot of us like grab hold of it. And I think I, I think that I, and a lot of people probably like, I think for a long time I thought that maybe that would work or would help and like I don't for me it I think it I think what like the th things that happen to you are like gonna mold you however they do you know it's like you don't really know like when you're growing up like you're like oh well my parents used to do this or like this happened and then you grow up and you're like, oh, well, that was like, that's actually not like a good thing. Or like, I don't know. You know, it's like the things are going to happen because like your parents are like the people around you are just people trying to literally get through. They did the same thing and they're like, and that. So it's just like a bunch of other people's lives impacting on yours and you grow up and. No, I don't think like anyone knows how to like raise a kid. Like, I mean, it's got to be so scary. Um, so I think like, they're going to fuck up, you know, it's like, you're going to have something that's like, and maybe, I mean, I'm sure there's some great parents out there. Like my parents are great and, but they're, they have, you know, they're Flaws. human and yeah, exactly. yeah. And so like, and I am who I am because of all of that. And I have like, my work because of that and but i think it 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 all gets scattered because 
there's i mean even you know you you have to go you go to school and like you could be like amazing at something but like kids are mean you know like you get shit on and uh, that could put shame on you or like i just think there's so many outside forces that change your mind so quickly as you grow up that it, it's like i think we're all like everyone is tortured in some way sure and i think that but i don't think that you have to i mean like half the great painters they might have been tortured but they were like the people that we know that are famous are like they had money or they had like they had backing and i'm not like i in that way i'm not tortured like i've had a great life and it's all been good and i think a lot of the torture i put on myself and um but yeah, I think like it doesn't matter how much like if you're you have like all the money in the world or anything like your torture comes through in any like there's so many many things that happen throughout your life that can change like the way your mind works or like how it develops. So I think we're all tortured, but I don't think like playing into it necessarily would help. Like I don't think it helps anyone. Like you might being open about it. I don't know. Like might be able to speak to someone that's in the same boat, but I think like going out and getting like, like fucked up and coming back and painting is like, like I, for me, I, I know I can't like, I don't, I can't work if I'm like, like I've had trouble with like drinking and stuff like that, but I, I can't do, I can't come into the studio and, drink like i wouldn't just because i i won't do anything i won't get anything right and like or like i just wouldn't it wouldn't do it for me you know it like wouldn't be it's nice to like zone in and like write this stuff out and get into it and i think if i was like drinking and not caring it just would be like it wouldn't matter anymore is there anything that you wish you learned in school that they like didn't teach you and then you got out and you're like oh man why didn't man um <laughs> definitely i mean which school <laughs> well let's yeah. go with art school with scad in art school because we all would have liked to know more about taxes and <laughs> yeah <laughs> mortgages in high school for sure yeah, I mean, like, in I would learn, I would like to learn, like, I think it, like, high school and stuff. I just wish it was, and I definitely didn't like grab hold as much as I should have. Um, but like in the South, like, I think they 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 taught us how to like cheat instead of like learn. I feel like like I had teachers that they're like, "Here's your final exam. I'll be back in 30. and you're like, "Okay." And everyone just stands up and is like, what's the fucking answer? <laughs> like, and stuff like that. Um, they'd help you get through. They're like, well, you just got to get through this class and you'll get out of school and like stuff like that. So I, there's a bunch of stuff I wish I had learned or like grasp more um, in like high school and middle school in art school. It's hard to say. I mean, I think like, like I took it for what it was and, and I, yeah, like the taxes thing, like I think that you, they could do a better job of all that. And I'm sure like at the time I had a bunch of like, like I wish I like, they told me how to do this, but in my like experience, I think because I just started doing what I wanted to do and was like, this is like I was printing. And in those classes that my teachers were like really open for me to like try stuff and experiment with whatever I wanted. And, um, 
so I don't know. Like, I think I just got like what I got out of it and the point where they're like, like, okay, you're going to make this piece. And a lot of people like, they would get upset. Like, Oh, I think it's like the problem where people get out and they don't know what to do is because they, they spent the time like trying to do the assignment and not like, like I would, I was like, how can I make this assignment into like the painting that I'm doing? And I don't know. I, I don't think like anyone did a terrible job and I don't think it was like there was anything lost on I just think it's like the things that you you take out of it and you're trying to I don't know, like no one's going to give you all that stuff anyway. It doesn't happen. Like you you decide what you want to learn and you can read the book or you can, you know, like that's the best part is like if I could pay to keep getting the syllabus, it'd be awesome because you have all the books that they're deciding that like they're deciding you get to read. And, but I think you, a lot of people dwell on it in more of like a, what I didn't get for what I paid instead of like what I took the time I was there like you I think you people need to think more of like like I use them like I knew what I wanted to do and I didn't know what I wanted to do for a long time but mm -hmm. like once I did or like like I, I was told like my first class like you should probably drop out you're like terrible you're, you're not gonna you're not an artist and I wouldn't and I wasn't making any like I didn't know what to do and I hadn't made anything before and so I took that and was like, I'm just going to do it now. So I just stayed up all night, every night and like made it what I wanted and like got what I wanted out of it and, um, got to where, like where I am now just by like fighting for what I thought. And, but yeah, I mean, I think the business side I don't think anyone knows because it's so it's so different. I mean, it's always changing. Like, I could tell you, like, there's things that people said that were stupid. Like that, I was like, "Why would you tell these kids this?" But other than that, I don't think I. I think you just take what you, what you're given, and you gotta like. It's like being in high school, and they tell you to read a book, and you're like you have to write the report, but there's one kid that'll never remember the book. And then there's like another kid that went out and bought another book to like figure out. They're like, that doesn't make, oh, like, I don't feel that way. I'm like, let's learn more or like, let's dig deeper. And I think you just like try and continue on if you get interested. So you get out of it, what you, whatever you want to get out of it kind of thing. Like, yeah. I mean, I think that like, there's definitely a lot, I took time off. I didn't go straight to school. Um, right. And so. Why did you I, go back to school then? Like if you were a little older. <laughs> that's like a whole nother. <laughs> but um, I, I moved to Las Vegas when I got out of high school to help with a music festival. And um, so I did that for a couple years. And then I, when that ended, I moved to Charleston and went, to I was enrolled at Trident Tech and I just never went to class and because it was in like an old high school building and I had just was like this is so shitty like I had just done something that was like really awesome and I wanted to be there still and um so I just didn't take advantage of it which I don't and I don't think it would have been the time to so then I left there or dropped out of college and then went to San Francisco to work for another music festival. And, um, I lived with, we, I lived with like eight guys and we couch surfed through San Francisco for like 
eight months or something like trying to just find somewhere to live we like impossible and um they had all gone to school and i was always the young guy like in the band and then like when i worked at the, i was 18 when i moved to las vegas they called me yb it was young bradley so it was like at some point so they would always street, be like street name that's my yeah that's my street name um yb um be boogie um they would always be like you got it you should go to school like i think you should go to school find something you want to learn and i didn't really know about like art school um but i think one of them told me like just like this won't last forever like you should find something you and i knew that i wouldn't like ever be respected like i was always gonna be young bradley i was always gonna be the young guy that was like there that would do whatever like help out and like like i worked my ass off and that's how i got like where i was but it's also like one of the big things that taught me how to work was like like staying around till like being an intern staying around until everyone is gone and being like can i take the trash out and they're like like it wasn't my job but it's like do whatever just to like be around and help out and um so we got like we got drunk one night and they were like you should go to school or like sign up see if you can get in because i didn't do good in high school at all and that's one of the things i was like i'll never get in anywhere and so i i was like yeah okay well I'll, and i and this is probably not the right but i don't really care i already i already made it through i got a degree but <laughs> um i uh I filled out like the application online that night for SCAD and fudge the numbers a little bit. <laughs> no, no. I literally just was like, I was like, this is what I do. I mean, I, I didn't have like a res or like I had a resume. I didn't have, and it's a pretty good resume. I mean that for like, I went, I tried to get in for production design and I had been working all these festivals, but I didn't have like a portfolio. I had never drawn or like anything like that. And, um, and so I like sent it off. I was like, I'll let you know how it goes. But, and so like a couple months later, so I finished this festival and I worked in ticketing and we worked with, um, the flights. So I like, you always get a flight in and out. So I was like able to fly in to Las Vegas. And then my plan was to like fly, change my ticket out to Hawaii where my dad had a friend like, working at this hotel and um so i did and i flew to hawaii and like met my mom there and she she was like i'll go scuba diving and we met there and like we it was she was gonna be there scuba diving for two weeks and i was gonna stay and like work they have like beach crews that like rental crews that i like the hotels that give you like jet skis and stuff and so that was like i was like i'm just gonna go do that for a while and I think like a week in, we're like by the we're like on the beach or something, and I I remember just being like, um, I got an email just now, and like I I got accepted to SCAD, and she was like, that's great. So what like what do you want to do? I was like, I guess I should like try, and so we like flew back, and I went to orientation and. It was, that's how I got here, but yeah, so I don't even know, remember what the question was, but it was, yeah, like that's how I got to the getting to SCAT or like art school. Mm. Oh yeah. Yeah. Why'd you go back basically? Oh yeah. Yeah. So yeah, it was just literally like partying one night and the buddies were like, you should go to art school. And you're like, all right. Yeah. I mean, and I like, well, you, they were like, you should go, you can go for stuff. That's not like pretty much someone was like, they have a production thing. So you would be able to get deeper into what we do. Yeah. And so I was like, okay, but I don't think I will be able to, like, I don't think that I'll, I will never get accepted to college. And so that was like the whole thing, but yeah. And then I never, I could never get into a production class. So I, um, took printmaking and fell in love with it. And then from there, that was the, I got into painting. 
So yeah, it's very, it's all over the place. I mean, that's, I mean, but that's, it's not, it's never a straight line, right? Like everyone's journey has got these like weird touch points and left hooks and stuff. Um, if, if you got, if you got a message one day and, uh, like a buddy of yours was like, Hey man, a friend of mine is moving to Savannah. He's an artist or she's an artist. Um, can you give me like some advice? Like who should, who she should talk to, where she should go? Like what the scene is like, you know, what the community is like, what, what advice would you give? Well, I'd tell them to come on down to the, the stables. Come on down. Yeah. <laughs> um, I don't know. I mean, like I've made, I would say it's a, it's a good, it's a good move. Like I I've made pretty much every friend that I would say was like my like actual real like lifetime friends here and they all do something different and they're all artists in their own way and it's just like coming from something that was like had no idea and like it was it's just been great to like be able to be yourself and I don't know like I hated Savannah forever and uh and I, I think it like it grows on you in like a really weird way. I was ready to leave for like ever. I also hate, I hate being hot. So I just like, that's one of the things, but, um, <laughs> I just, yeah, I don't, I think being like in the South, it like was weird. And then, but yeah, I've grown to like, like, I think this is, like I'll be here for at least a little while until there's somewhere else to go. Like I, it's always nice to come back for sure. Like going on a big trip and then you're like, we're back. And I definitely didn't used to do that. I used to be like, Oh, I got to go back to Savannah. Um, but I think like there is a really great community here of artists and musicians and people just like trying to get, something done and like there's just a there's like it's just growing like so fast and I don't know there's something special about it that I I still haven't like fully found but I um but like the people that I have met are better than most people that I've met I mean like they are they have become more family than people I've met in my life before being here. And, um, yeah, it's nice to have like, like a common ground with, like I've had people move and they come back and move back here. And, um, I don't know. It's, it's an interesting spot, but yeah, I like, I love the stables. I've been here for a long time. And, um, I think, if more like more people come, there'll be more opportunity and people with new visions. And I think that's what we're seeing now is it's like every year there's more stuff popping up and hopefully there'll be more, um, like it's hard, like, like galleries. I love to see more galleries, but, and you do like, there's probably three that come every year, but they are usually gone by the end of the year. And, but it's just a hard game. Um, but I think at some point someone will figure it out. And I think people are getting closer to being able to do that. Um, but it's, it's really open. I don't know. It's like, it's nice to be somewhere where you can just be like whoever you are. And everyone's just kind of like, chilling and they're down and they want to know like what you do and like I have I'm every time we go out I'm like talk to someone or meet someone that's like oh I do this and I saw your paintings and like like I work on like with synthesizers like we should make like music or like I had a, we saw a guy at uh south or at service the other day and he's like he's like I've been meaning to talk to you like I want to like like arpeggiate your paintings into like music because it's it's like the same thing 
and just like I don't like I had never thought about anything like that and now I can't stop thinking about it you know it's like that's a cool way to incorporate like another medium into yeah your physical work yeah and I think it's just like like the scad hub I don't know it's it's bring it brings so many people and there so there's just like so much opportunity to meet like international or like see other views and like other ways of doing stuff and i think that's great like i think it's i think it'll be i mean if it continues it could be like a a new boston kind of thing and um and then you don't have to go and go go to boston or go to go to like brooklyn or go to like I guess I meant Brooklyn, but yeah. Um, like New York's crazy and it'll probably be crazy here at some point, but it's nice to be in and on the ground floor, I guess, and see how it's grown. So I would say, come on. All right. Come on down. <laughs> come on down to the stables. Wait, so if they, um, if they invented a cell phone where you can call back in time, you can leave your 17 year old self a 60 second voice voicemail. What would you say? Oh man, it would cut off before I finished. <laughs> um, maybe not. I don't know. Like, I, I haven't called yet. So. <laughs> oh, okay. You're, you're calling for me. Okay. Okay. okay that ringing. makes it faster. Um, just say like, like it, it all gets better and it it gets it doesn't get easier but it um but everything changes and it gets like just don't like dwell so much on present and but be present be more present for sure but don't don't stick with it forever and don't let it like take over or stay on your mind too much and it's like take things for what they are and try and move on and see the good and stuff and the bad and stuff and it's all there for a reason hmm. um what advice would you give to uh somebody that wants is maybe graduating high school and uh should they go to art school they want to be an artist should they go to art school should they take some time off should they just get right into it i mean what uh what kind of avenue would you suggest they take it's hard i think like for me i would never i would never have made it through if i went straight in i mean i also didn't have like the I wasn't at the place where it would even have mattered or like it wouldn't even made sense for me to go um, before all the other stuff had happened after high school. But, you know, I think like I saw a bunch of kids that I saw a bunch of kids that it was like, you should have just gone to a normal school, you know, like, which is fine. Um, but I think when, when you're paying so much for like a specialty thing, it's it's hard to justify like coming in and, and really not caring and uh and as like and like being out of that it's i had people in my classes where i'm like this is a, a total like slap in the face that we're gonna graduate together and and it hurts because you're like some people would just say i don't care and i i'm going to finish and, you know, and that goes back to, like, you get what you put in. Mm -hmm. And so you can't, like, dwell on that. But I think, like, there's also people that it wasn't the right time. And they could have, if they did take time, they probably would have loved it or, like, really it would have helped. So I think, like, I just, like, at 18, like, I don't know, like, gr graduating at 21 or whenever people 22 whatever like no like if you went straight in i don't know how people do it 
I definitely I wouldn't be doing the same thing. I would have it would have been lost on me probably. I would. Um, but it's hard. Like I think like there's some great. I went to middle school with this kid that was like, he was like incredible at drawing and painting, and he was just like. And I always just thought like the whole time I was in school, I was like, that kid should be here instead of me. Like he, I mean, he's like, he didn't have the means and like, I, he was one of my friends growing up, but and I have no idea where he is now. Hopefully he's still drawing. It was like incredible, but, um, like maybe that guy, you know, it, he goes right out of high school into, into, a out of Greenville into like a art school probably could be great. You know, I think some people need that change at the time, but I think it just all is like so up in the air. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of people don't know how to grasp on or like you're not ready or, you know, you just like, you're not there to where like you might be like, I love school but I also am alone and I'm, and that's hard or I can go and do whatever. No one's telling me what to do. That's hard. You know, it's just so it's the first time that you're like really open and free to like, I don't know. I think, yeah, I think it's, it's definitely case to case. I wouldn't have been able to do it. I saw a bunch of people that didn't do it and but I did see a bunch of people that are doing great. Like, like I know I saw a bunch of people that finished and then they were like, I'm going to go into the graduate program like that. I, I would probably say, no, we don't, but also like who's to know. I mean, if you have an idea or you will like, you're like, like, you're like, I want to teach. That's all I want to do. Do it that's the only way, you know, or like, that's the way you're going to do it. But I think a lot of people jump in cause they're like, I'm not ready to not be told what, what to do and what time I got to do it. And, right. um, that's probably not the best time to pay more money to keep going. But yeah, it is interesting that like, once you get out, there is like no one being like, okay, here's your assignment. It's like, Oh, I got to, come up with my own work order right like, yeah, yeah no and it's <laughs> give it's, yourself an assignment it is interesting like i and i think like i had trouble but i was already i had kind of already started on like the last two years i had like i started working on like my final show like all those pieces i found what i wanted to do and i just was said like i'm gonna do this and i think that's what was they don't really push you to do that. Um, and I think that's what, like a lot of people have a really hard time finishing with, like, they don't tell you, like you get to this final class and they're like, okay, like you need a cohesive body of work to show. And all these people have just been doing like random projects for four or five years that have nothing to do with each other. And so you just have like this mix match of like, all this different shit that a teacher, like different teachers have told you, um, that you like, this is your assignment to learn how to like glue things to like collage or like, and so I like, that's definitely hard, but do you think it's important for artists to find like that one thing and focus on it? I think it's important to find some sort of, direction that you enjoy because like from there like I made work about bowling and like picking up bowling pins but it had the same effect like it has the same idea you know it's like to pick up bowling pins over and over and then they get knocked back down it's the same thing as like fulfilling a painting that someone told you to do it's like it's always going to end and restart and like so just like and it's all like doing a job it's like picking up boxes unloading an 18 wheeler they're just gonna pull another one up and that was like the whole thing it's like like doing an eight like six hours of like bent down like putting bowling pins back up 
um, you you have that like I'm gonna fucking die, <laughs> and then you finish it and you're like, whoo, like I need like a beer. That was like we did it, and like I worked with all my buddies. I was very lucky to like always. I've always gotten to do great jobs with my friends, and so it helps to be like down and out with your buddy and you can kind of you're like dude i don't know like this is terrible and you're like okay we're gonna do it um but yeah it's just like i think grabbing on to like an idea or something that gets you through you can make anything out of it like but if you like to paint like paint but at some point you might feel like like over like filming it and overlaying you know and it could do something like lighting or yeah I don't think anything like like I've always said like I like we had those cl like classes where they're like what are you going to be doing in like five ten or fifteen years I always had such a bad hard time with that and because it's like I hope I'm not doing this like I, it'd be cool if I'm still painting and I'm not that like, I don't want to like be creating, but I, I don't want to be making like the same painting in even five years, you know, like I want it to change. Um, and I think that's like the goal is like, you should be able to make whatever you want, but I think grabbing onto one thing and getting into it is the best way to join, like jump into something else. Cause you'll either like, It'll just make you think about other things or like, I don't know. You just get into like that mindset and, and once you get there and you, you start to like realize, like think about what you're doing and in the different ways, um, it kind of, you start looking at the world differently. Like you're, you're like, oh, like the, these two things connect. And like this idea that I have with this painting has the same thing. It's like that. Um, and just stuff like that. Making connections with the world around and like, yeah, I don't know. I think it's all, it's also weird because it's also up in the air and like um, everyone's like, everyone's path is so different and weird and like what like back to the, like the beginning it's like how your mind works and what's happened to you it's fascinating and, to me i love it i love i love hearing you think out loud yeah that's like I had, I had a hard time like getting through school because like i um yeah you know i have like write papers and stuff and <laughs> my teachers definitely didn't like reading mine because i would like i write like like three sentences and then I like ask myself a question in the middle of it and like answer that question but like in like five different ways that I thought like while I'm typing it and um it's just like I think questioning is really great and and there's no like one way to do anything so you're just kind of like left to your own devices of how your brain is working and how it works that day or where you're at. And, and I think that's why, like, like I've gotten like really into trying to work on my mental state and like get like, I really, I don't know. I like therapy and, um, I've been doing like ketamine infusions, um, and just like stuff like that. Like I, I went and for my birthday, my girlfriend, took me to a float tank hmm. and I think just like trying to find different experiences to kind of see just how things can change what you feel or how you think and can pull things out because the mind is like so crazy and it's like it can like hide from you but yeah uh, what's next? I, I heard there's possible talks about maybe uh, doing a show with Nathan. Uh, where can people learn more about you? Where can they see your work? How can they follow along? Um, yeah, me and Nathan have talked about doing a show. 
we've been talking for a while. It's uh, I didn't we're I don't know where we're on where we're at with that. I think it, it'll happen at some point. We um, I hope it does. Um, it's kind of been hard to lock anything in, but I've been in like a weird transition period for a while, like with moving jobs and stuff, but, um, in the new work. And, um, so yeah, I hope that happens. Um, and I'm mostly like, I have a website. It's <laughs> Bradley Collins art.com. Um, and it's got, it's got most of the stuff. I mean, it, it's definitely not as it's got like everything that's been shown ever. Mm. Um, so after a show, that's like where it all goes. But like my Instagram, which is also Bradley Collins art, um, that's where like you would see all the like that's like day by day. Like right now, like this new painting I'm doing, I've been like I'm really working on like trying to figure out like the whole posting and um, like that's really interesting to me. Just like trying to figure out how to be present in that way so I like this painting i'm working on now i'm i'm kind of like posting every step of one painting like every like so there's like a lot of detail into which and it'll continue for however long it takes to finish this one piece um but i'll just be like documenting that um so yeah if you want to see like one piece be made over time um my Instagram and then through there you can see like all the way back to like I think there's like the first time I like dripped dripped ink on like a piece of paper it was like eight years ago wow yeah all documented yeah that's awesome man yeah the documenting is uh is really nice it's like it's very interesting to like have everything like I have like all these books that oh like like I keep everything written down so um just keeping everything is hoarding and we, I don't know, but yeah, like, but yeah, so Instagram website, my everything, anything that you could think of that you would want to get in touch with someone, we would all be Bradley Collins art. Cool. Yeah. Well, I appreciate you coming on and uh, you're one of the, uh, there's only a couple of the uh, stables, OGs left that I have to interview, so I appreciate you coming on. Uh, yeah, man. Hopefully it wasn't too. I mean, oh no, I know you got to awesome. edit it, but <laughs> uh, yeah, no, it was great. It's cool to hear like, and it's cool to visually watch the progress, and then now to like, hear your thought process behind it. Um, so if you're if you have questions for Bradley for uh, YB, you can uh, follow him on Instagram. <laughs> if you're watching on YouTube, you can drop a comment. If you have uh, episode feedback or guest suggestions, you can email me at hello at creative truth.com In upcoming episodes. I'll be talking to more artists, entrepreneurs and creative professionals to help discover their path to success. If you're listening, I iTunes, leave me a good review. If you're watching on YouTube, like share, subscribe. Uh, let me know, drop a comment. Let me know you're watching. Uh, appreciate everyone for listening. Uh, Bradley, appreciate you coming on. And yeah, man. Thanks for having we'll, uh, me. Yeah, for sure. Th- you know, we could do it again sometime. So let's do it for sure. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, let me get a little further into the new stuff and yeah, we'll, uh, yeah, that'd be great. Cool. All right. And we'll talk to you in the next episode.